All right, considering the significant consequences of falling off the fiscal cliff, you'd think the president would have some sort of an interest in finding a solution to the crisis. However, it is now becoming increasingly obvious that something is standing in the way. So what could it be? Now, what is it that is preventing the president from negotiating or even offering up any meaningful concessions to Republicans? Well, now even a reporter at the left-wing newspaper, the New York Times, is admitting, well, it just may be Obama's arrogance. Watch this. When you talk about the feeling at the White House, there's a palpable difference now compared to 2011, the summer of 2011. They, they are so much cockier right now at the White House than they were a year and a half ago when they were doing this. They really believe they're set out. We're not going to negotiate. You know, you come to us. We're not going to negotiate against ourselves. We're not going to like put, you know, keep putting out more proposals. Now, my next guest argues that it's time for Republicans to stop trying to cut through the president's arrogance, walk away from the negotiating table. I've been saying that right here on this program. In fact, Congressman Alan West recently told the great one, Mark Levin, that it's, quote, silly to try and work with somebody who he believes is a, quote, Marxist, socialist, rigid ideologue. Here to elaborate on those comments, the man himself, Florida Congressman Colonel Alan West. Colonel, I don't remember that you ever said Marxist, socialist before. Maybe being freed up from Congress has allowed you to say that, or maybe I'm wrong in not hearing it before. No, I've said that before because I think when you sit down and you look at the policies that have emanated from President Obama, his administration, this entire class warfare rhetoric that we continue to hear is definitely a Marxist theory. When you look at the nationalizing of production, being the healthcare industry, the Dodd Frank with the financial industry, the automobile industry, what Lisa Jackson and the EPA is doing to the energy sector, and of course the National Labor Relations Board, that's nationalizing production. When you look at the incredible expansion of the welfare nanny state, and all of a sudden this belief of uh, economic fairness, economic patriotism, fairness and fair shot. Those are uh, the type of policies and theories that are not consistent with a constitutional republic, definitely not consistent with our founding fathers and the type of people that they read, being Rousseau, Montesquieu, or, or John Locke. And so when you talk about the arrogance of the president, we reelected someone that went from $10.6 trillion to $16 trillion in debt. We've had four straight years of trillion-dollar deficits. We've had an incredible, uh, earth-shattering numbers of Americans in poverty, Americans on food stamps. We've seen a 32 percent increase in welfare spending. We've seen gas prices being exorbitantly high. So he has every right to be arrogant and feel that well, he is never going to be held responsible. But I don't think they're going to compromise on that. But is the base just looking for the scalp of the rates instead of the yes. money? They want the scalp of yes, the rates. Absolutely. There's no question. Even, There's no question. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, they because you can make it up. I mean, the president has said it himself. You can make it up another way. And it has now gotten to the point that they want that. And by the way, they also don't want him to touch entitlements. They don't want any any spending cuts whatsoever. So, uh, But yes, the White House would, quote, absolutely go over the fiscal cliff if Republicans would not raise tax rates. Now, Republicans are pointing back to July 2011 and this statement by President Obama. Except two summers ago, the president himself claimed he could raise even more revenue without raising rates. Uh, give us $1.2 trillion in additional revenues, uh, which could be accomplished without hiking taxes, uh, tax rates, but could simply be accomplished by eliminating loopholes, eliminating some deductions, uh, and uh, engaging in a tax reform process that could have lowered rates generally while broadening the base. What we said was uh, give us 1.2 trillion in additional revenues, uh, which could be accomplished without hiking taxes, uh, tax rates but could simply be accomplished by eliminating loopholes, eliminating some deductions, uh, and uh, engaging in a tax reform process that could have lowered rates generally while broadening the base. The White House is saying that's out of context, but not specifically how out of context. Let's bring it on our panel. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard, Kirsten Powers, columnist for the Daily Beast, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, Charles. Look, I love the way the president says what we need is a conceptual breakthrough, meaning Republicans have to accept a hike in rates. What he means is a political surrender, because there is no economic reason why you cannot raise the money he wants raised by doing it through eliminating deductions, exclusions, and credits. Number one, as we saw, he himself said so a year and a half ago. 
Secondly, the, the same debt reduction commission he appointed, and then of course ignored, spoke about raising much more through eliminating deductions and loopholes and credits, broadening the base, and at the same time lowering the rates. That's the economic ideal. Everybody understands this is what happened in 86 in the tax reform. It's what was recommended in the Debt Reduction Commission. In their three scenarios, in one of them, they would eliminate so many deductions that they would lower the upper rates to 23% and still come out revenue neutral. So of course it can be done. The breakthrough that the president is talking about is to break the Republicans, to create a civil war in the House by insisting that they go back on the idea of not raising rates, which is economically a correct idea. It encourages economic growth if you lower rates, or at least you keep them the same. This is all about politics, nothing about economics. This is a different President Obama than in the debt ceiling negotiations uh, last time around. Mm -hmm. um, they are clearly signaling that they have the stronger hand, mm -hmm. and they are not... Uh, it doesn't even seem, Kirsten, like they're getting to a room. Yeah, to, well, to they, do, they do feel like they have the stronger hand because he won re election, and, and every poll shows that most Americans are fine with the tax rates going up on uh, people making more than $250,000. So they feel like they have that on their side. What they also have on their side is that the president, you can't forget, did give in on this issue twice. And so, and the last time he gave in on it, he said, never again. So that's what's hanging over him, is that he has his base looking at him saying, you, you gave in on this two times. It's now time to live up to your word. And so he, he is kind of boxed in in a way politically as well that, that he has to, has to give this. I agree.